From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Open Line. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Line. Very good show tonight. We're talking about something that a lot of people have been debating here in Tennessee. What place does Nathan Bedford Forrest have in Tennessee history? And tonight we want to hear from you. you know, what, what do you think? Certainly Nathan Bedford Forrest was a military leader. He was a slave owner. And he's widely recognized as a leader in the Ku Klux Klan. He has a bust in the state capitol. Is that appropriate? We also recognize a day here in Tennessee, Nathan Bedford Forrest Day. Is that appropriate? There's a bill in the legislature that would stop that. We would no longer recognize Nathan Bedford Forrest Day. And we have with us two people, or we hope to have with us two people, who could debate, kind of, or talk about both sides of this. Representative Mike Stewart, uh, we expect to be here at any time. And we have with us right now Representative Mike Sparks. Representative Sparks, thank you for being here. Yeah, I'm glad here. to be here. Thank you very much. And, all right, so you understand the concern people have. Here you have somebody, he was a leader in, in the Civil War, he was a slave owner, and he was a leader in the in the Klan. Yes. Should we, and, and we had Mike Stewart coming on to talk about his bill to end Tennessee's recognition of Nathan Bedford Forrest Day. Number one, let's start with that. Should the state recognize Nathan Bedford Forrest Day? Should we have a mandatory recognition of Nathan Bedford Forrest? You know, I haven't really given him much thought until here recently, and um, uh, be honest with you, I never really gave Nathan Bedford Forrest that much thought um, until until the uh, little discourse and the, and the debate. Um, you know, I, I really, I really don't know. I really don't know. I'm up for the discussion. I'm up for um, uh, for the dialogue. I think um, uh, we need to study our history. And I liked what um, Edmund Burke said: "Those who don't know their history are doomed to repeat it." And um, I had a great uncle that was killed in a Nazi Nazi concentration camp. I always remember my mom speaking about it. My mom's from Scotland, and. Um, People need to know their history. People need to know what happened in the Holocaust. People need to know what happened throughout slavery. Um, and there was people on on both sides that fought and died. And um, it was a it was a it was a it was a bad war, no doubt. Um, but Nathan Bedford Forrest, I mean, I think, in a way, I've kind of become a little bit of a fan of his in a, here lately because of some of what I've read about him. And I can tell you why I was. Him speaking at Memphis, uh, I guess it's called the um, the Pole Bears uh, International Pole Bears Group, if I'm not mistaken, and they're supposed to be like maybe the forerunners of uh, the NAACP, a civil rights group. And that story kind of touched me, and it made me think, wow, here's a man that probably found redemption later in life, much like um, much like. Uh, 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 the man that wrote Amazing Grace, John Newton, found redemption later in his life. He was a slave ship captain, and um, he wrote the story of the song Amazing Grace. A lot of folks don't know that, and it was Will William Wilberforce, uh, a, a great British leader that um, fought uh, to end slavery in Great Britain. Um, so a lot of folks make mistakes early on in life. I make mistakes as a legislator, and. Um, I think we learn by those mistakes, though, and move Should forward. the state honor someone who uh, who fought for slavery um, and who has his history? Okay, so so maybe he learned, and and there's even mm -hmm. some you know, there's some discussion about that. You know, how sincere were those words? I mean, it's it's tough to sit here a hundred years later and say that was. 100% sincere or that wasn't, and, and I can't do Well, we that. could say how much sincerity did I have today. Exactly. I mean, or, so how much, Mr. Stewart. so it is hard, it's hard to do that, but should the state hold a place of honor in our in our capital and and a day for for somebody that that has that history, you yes. know, is, has been so um, associated with the Klan? The well, if you Klan. look back at, at state politics, it was it was the Democrats who probably honored him more so than the Republicans. If you really want to look at politics, um, you know, the first black representative come from my area, Samson Keeble, and I've been trying to bring attention to, to his story. He was a Republican and a Confederate soldier. 
his bus is just 25 feet away. So I'm, I'm saying this is a slippery slope. If, if Representative Stewart wants to go after that, um, are they next going to go after the, the Sam Davis monument that's right out here at the Capitol? Are they next going to go after Samson Keeble because he was a Confederate soldier? I, and I, I'll tell you, Ben, I think the reason his story, Samson Keeble's story, is not told is because he was a Republican and because he was a Confederate soldier. I've taken a Tennessee history class, and he's not even mentioned in the history books. I think the first black state representative should be in the history books in the state of Tennessee. So tell me why this is different. I mean, I think it's there's, there's certain things that, that people want to put in history books and other people want to leave it out. And sometimes it's, it's, in my opinion, it's pure politics. But if you go back and look at this, it wasn't Republicans that put this in there. It was the Democrats that got that passed. I don't well, know what a, year it was. A, like over 100 years ago. So should, should the leadership now, whether Democrat or Republican, do something about it? Should, should we should we change I, that? You know, I mean, when we start talking about digging up graves in Memphis and digging up bodies, I think this is foolishness. There's only what I, word I can think of. It's foolishness. We have so many problems in this country. I mean, our, our deficit, 18.3 trillion. Textbooks, student tuition, 1.3 trillion. The fatherless rate in the African American community is over 70 percent. Our prisons are full. Who's talking about it? Where are the lobbyists for these issues? So we're going to waste time in the General Assembly talking about issues over here that at the end of the day doesn't lift one person up. It's not going to help one person. I, but know? I have heard people say they don't feel that that is a welcoming thing. When they walk into the Capitol, there's a bust of a leader from the Ku Klux Klan. You know, if, if, if folks want to move it to, you know, to another area a of the museum Capitol. museum is what they've talked about. You know, I, I, I'm open to the debate. Like I say, um, if you'd asked me six months ago if I'd be on Channel 5 talking about Nathan Bedford Forrest, I would think there's other things I'd be talking about, not this. But when I start seeing a slippery slope about digging up graves, you know, and the First Amendment something we need to cherish, you need to cherish as a journalist. And we start going down this slippery slope, I think um, there's other things that's going to happen. And that's what scares me um, as, as first as a Christian two as a husband, three as a father. These things scare me when I start seeing this stuff because I, I just think it's, I think we're heading down a path that, that's not going to be good for, for not only this state but for this country. And so there really, uh, there are many issues, but the two main, okay, the bust in the Capitol, should that be moved to a museum? And the other is end recognition of, of Nathan Bedford Forest Day. Right now it's, it's state law, the governor has to to sign a proclamation that every July, I believe it's um, 13th, but it's in July, every yeah. July we have Nathan Bedford Forest Day. So I wasn't even aware of that until here six weeks ago or two months ago. So is that something whose time has passed? Should, is, is that uplifting to all citizens? And then I'll start taking good, calls. That's a good point. You know, is, is that uplifting to, to all senator, or to all citizens that we have, that we have a Nathan Bedford Forest Day? It's enshrined in state law. I think it's uplifting, though, when you look at the words that, that he, when he spoke to, to, to those African Americans down in Memphis, I think that's uplifting. I think it's uplifting when a, when a, when a poor, when a little, sick, what is it, 15, 16 year old black girl carries him a, a, a bouquet of flowers and, and he kisses her on the cheek. I think that's uplifting. Lifting. And I think that showed his character later in life. I mean, if I'm not going to go to a group and speak if I don't if I don't like what they stand for, but Nathan Bedford Forrest chose to go speak to that group. And my understanding, um, uh, and I, there's other people that can speak on this back home that are historians. Greg Tucker is one of them, more articulately than I can. But he he's the way he speaks on it is that he was uh, uh, kind of advocated for African Americans to seek um, to go to law school. To get more involved, um, he didn't want African Americans to vote. He was opposed to that under any circumstances. He said, "And now, and what that, year was that that you're quoting?" That was 1868. Under any circumstances, that they shouldn't vote. And and I mean, if, I mean, if, if we, we going to go after to, Lincoln, well, next, if we do, I mean, if, if we want to honor him, there would be for his civil rights, you know, kind of stance. There might be other people that 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 could be honored for that. Mm -hmm. Certainly, if, if you take him at his word, and, and, and there, there are questions about was he doing it for some expediency or, or not, and I, I don't know. Well, this is a later. slippery slope, man. If, if we go after this, are we going to go after Thomas Jefferson? Are we going to go after Andrew Jackson? Are we going to go after uh, George Washington? 
this is a slippery slope. And I can tell you, I know how folks work. If you give them this little inch, they'll take a mile. And, and as a journalist, I would think that you, you all would be really paying attention to this, this issue, probably more so than, than others. Um, there's a lot of crazy chaos that's going on in this world, and it's, there's just a lot of foolishness that's happening. Um, I don't, I'm not, like I said, I don't mind talking about this subject, but I'd rather be talking about solutions and, and problem solving, because um, the way, the path that we're on in this country, it's unsustainable. Okay. This issue, I'm telling you, this is a slippery slope we're going down. All right, uh, all right, we have a bunch of calls. We're going to take a break, and then we're just going to start taking calls. So if you have an opinion, I think there's one line open, you can call in, and we are. We're just going to go through the phones and, and take the calls. Again, Representative Mike Stewart, who was the sponsor of the bill to end uh, Tennessee's recognition of Nathan Bedford Force Day, he was also going to be here, but, but he's not here at this point. Right now we have Representative Mike Sparks, who's obviously on the other side. Happy to have him here. Uh, we'll take a break, and then we'll start taking your phone calls right after this.